The world of insects is full of some of the strangest and most unusual creatures on Earth, many of which don't look like they should even exist. Among these extremely unique creatures is this evolutionary oddity. Is it a mantis? A fly? Both? Neither? Well, it's called a mantid fly, and while rarely seen, they often seem to pop up in the most random of places, and there's a chance this incredibly strange insect is in your backyard right now. I'm Mikey Green, and my goal is to show just how little we really know about the strange creatures living their hidden lives all around us. While I usually have to go out into some of the most untamed habitats Florida has to offer, just to find these amazing animals, today's target showed itself in my own backyard, and there might just be one in yours too. Let's take a look at this incredibly unique mantid fly. I cannot believe what I'm looking at right now. Sitting right under here, this leaf, is a beautiful mantid fly, something I've been looking for for a really long time. Let's try and catch this amazing insect and get it nice and up close. Look at that in there. Let's take a good look at this beautiful insect. All right, this what I have in this tube right here is one of the strangest insects in the entire world and one I have been wanting to feature on this channel for years. This is the mantid fly. Specifically, this species is the four spotted mantid fly, which I could tell by looking at the margins of those wings, seeing four black spots along those margins of the wings. Now looking at this creature, this very strange looking creature, I can see why you might think at first that this is a praying mantis, a small species of mantis. They have those two raptorial forelegs at the front that they could use to grasp things, a very long neck and a triangular face with large eyes, as well as the fact that they stand tall walking on those four back legs. But believe it or not, these are not even closely related to praying mantises. These are in a group called the Neuroptera, which contains the lace wings, the ant lions, the owl flies, and other related insects. And looking at the overall body shape, face shape, and the wing venation, this is very similar to a green lace wing, with the obvious difference, of course, of those raptorial forelegs. Now within the Neuroptera is the family Mantispidae, which are these mantid flies. And within the mantid fly family is the subfamily Mantispinae, which is the subfamily that contains this species right here. Now I might be wondering, why is knowing what subfamily this is in important? Well, it turns out that members of the subfamily Mantispinae actually have some of the strangest life cycles of any insect out there. As adults, mantid flies in general are predatory. They feed on small insects like moths, small flies, and small beetles just to name a few. And they use those characteristic praying mantis-like front legs to capture their prey. And just like praying mantises, don't inject venom, completely relying on mechanical damage to kill, subdue, and eat their prey. This mantis-like appearance is completely the effect of convergent evolution. And looking at the structure of those front legs, it makes it really clear that it is just a coincidence that they have a very similar looking appearance. The way their front legs tuck in is completely opposite to the way that praying mantises tuck their front legs in. But anyways, once adult mantid flies have mated, the female will lay her eggs on a surface like a leaf, a branch, or a wall. And once the eggs hatch into their little worm-like larvae, the larvae then search for a spider's egg sac. In the behavior that is unique to mantid flies in the subfamily Mantispinae, these larvae then make their way into the spider's egg sac and develop completely relying on eating the spiders' eggs inside the egg sac and developing through their instars of their larval stage inside a spider's egg sac. When they reach the point of their lives where they're ready to pupate and reach that next stage of their metamorphosis, they then emerge out of the spider's egg sac. But unlike what you might expect for a pupa, their pupae in later stages of the pupation process can actually move. While they're not sexually mature and don't have wings yet, mantid flies have this weird little subadult stage where they still have fully functional legs and those distinctive raptorial forelegs so they could still hunt for that brief period of time, I believe only a few hours, in that in-between stage between the pupa and the adult, where then a winged adult then emerges out of that pupa and the life cycle starts over once again. This is called hypermetamorphosis, which is when a metamorphosis of an insect has more than two or three stages like most insects do. Most insects simply only have a nymph and an adult stage, 
or a larva, pupa, and adult stage. But think of that weird little subadult stage, like if a butterfly's chrysalis grew legs in a proboscis and was able to walk around sucking nectar out of flowers, but didn't have wings or was sexually mature yet. That is how strange of an adaptation this is. And this form of hypermetamorphosis is completely unique to mantid flies, with the larvae relying on spider egg sacs for their food, completely unique to members of the mantispinae subfamily. Other subfamilies of mantid flies use different methods of larval development. Some are actually parasites and will live on a host, oddly enough, usually a spider, before pupating and then becoming an adult. If you look past their almost menacing alien-like appearance and their very strange life cycle, these things are actually extremely beneficial creatures to have around. And seeing one of these in your backyard is actually a really good sign. Mantid flies are quite rare to come across, especially down here in South Florida where I am right now. I have never been up close with a mantid fly and have never seen this specific species of mantid fly in my entire life. And these mantid flies are great predators to have around to keep populations of insects that might be considered pests in your garden to a minimum. And if you're arachnophobic, you especially love these mantid flies' tendency to be parasitic towards spiders during their larval stage. Whether they live inside the spider's egg sac and eating the eggs, or whether they live inside the spider itself, these mantid flies seem to have something against spiders, not sure what it is. But these things are great predators for garden pests and just a great sign of native biodiversity, even in your own backyard. Man, I cannot get over finally being able to get up close with one of these gorgeous mantid flies. I have been wanting to do this for so long and it feels so good to finally have one right here with me. But I feel like we've had enough time with this absolutely incredible insect predator, one of the most unique animals in the entire world, but it's time to let it go right back into the environment so I could get back to hunting insects. Just an incredible little insect. And if you enjoyed learning about this creature that looks like some weird hybrid created in a lab, then you'll enjoy this video right here where we find scorpion flies, which are arguably even stranger because they look like if you took a fly and a scorpion and just mashed it together. But I promise there's something even stranger. Enjoy and see you there.